الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي لا تراه العيون ولا يصفه الواصفون ولا تخالطه الذنون ولا يخشى الدوائر يعلم عدد قطر الأمطار وعدد ورق الأشجار وعدد ما أظلم عليه الليل وما أشرق عليه النهار ولا تواري منه سماء سماء ولا أرض أرضا اللهم أنت حق من عبد وحق من ذكر وأنصر من ابتغي وأرأف من ملك وأجود من أعطى وأوسع من سئل أنت الفرد لا ند لك وأنت الله لا شريك لك كل شيء هالك إلا وجهك لن تطاع إلا بإذنك ولن تعصى إلا بعلمك تطاع فتشكر وتعصى فتغفر القلوب لك مفضية والسر عندك علانية الحلال ما أحللت والحرام ما حرمت والدين ما شرعت والأمر ما قضيت العبد عبدك والخلق خلقك والأمر أمرك فأنت الله الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز ماذا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيه هو مؤمن فأولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا وقال تعالى في مقام آخر ألا إن كلمة الله هي العليا وقال تعالى في مقام آخر قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمعون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أبا سفيان جئتكم بكرامة الدنيا وخير الآخرة أسلم تسلم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الناس معادن كمعادن الذهب والفضة خيارهم في الجاهلية خيارهم في الإسلام إذا فقهوا أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم My dear brothers, sisters, elders and youngsters Normally in this world when we honor an individual or when we honor a personality we understand or recognize their honor through the praise of individuals When people praise someone we recognize that person to be honorable we recognize that person to be a person of reverence, of respect, because people are praising that individual. Humans are praising that individual. So because of that individual's praise that is found within the masses, humans are attracted to that person. My dear friends, imagine an individual, a personality, a human being whose praise is not limited through the praise of humans but rather his honor is elevated through the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His honor is elevated through the praise of his creator. His honor is elevated through وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ that we have elevated your praise. And this was the honor that was embodied within Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we don't find him to simply be honorable because we speak of him today. ما إن مدحت محمد بمقالتي ما إن مدحت محمد بمقالتي ولكن مدحت مقالتي بمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. How the poet says that no, we have not honored our prophet because we speak of him, because we embody his sunnah, because we speak of his praise, or because we praise him. Rather, our lives have been honored by his sunnah being present within our lives. Our statements become sweet. Our tongues become honorable by saying his name sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The honor of this man began through the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the time of Mecca, when after the beginning of wahi took place, and for some time in qata'at al-wahi, wahi stopped in the fatra. For six months, some scholars of seer say, Others say for two years, there was no revelation. And in this time, the people of Mecca started to abuse the Prophet ﷺ, to clamp down upon him, started calling him names. And then they said to him, قَدْ وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ That your Lord has forsaken you. Your Lord has left you. The responsibility of honoring believers lies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our honor is not found within the praise of people. 
Our honor is found within the praise of Allah. Our honor is not found within people knowing us. Our honor is found within Allah recognizing us. Well, when we speak of Allah, Allah speaks of us. How the hadith the Prophet says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan nada Jibreel. That when Allah loves someone, He calls Jibreel. He says, Ya Jibreel, Inni uhibbu fulan ibn fulan fa ahibbu. That I love so and so person. So you also love so and so person. And the Jibreel comes down within the heavens and he announces that Allah has declared His love for so and so individual. All of you must love this person. That our honor is found within Allah recognizing us. So in this moment where the entirety of his family, the Meccans around him have turned against him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervenes. When there's no one to, when there is no one to stand up for us, when there's no one to look towards, that is the moment we realize that the only person that we need is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innama ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. We turn towards Allah. So Allah says, Walduha wallayli ida saja. Walduha, we swear by the morning's light. How some mufassirun say, we swear by the beauty of your face. We swear by the beauty of your face that the world has never seen anything similar to it. With the poet says that no eye has ever seen such beauty. لم تعبه ثجلا ولم تزري به صعلا قسيم وسيم في عينيه دعج وفي أشفاره وطف وفي صوته صحل وفي لحيته كثاثة إن تكلم سماه وعليه البهاء مم معبد رضي الله عنها says when I saw this man رأيت رجلا ظاهر الوضاء I saw a man of a striking appearance beautifully created a specimen of your creation. Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu anhu says, when the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered into Medina to al-Munawwara, the Jews of Medina came to me. At this time, he was a part of their community. And they said to me that this man has entered our city and he has taken over. Not only has he taken over the religious authority of our community, he has also taken over the political authority of our community. We want... When this man walks down the hill, we wish for you to say something about him that will blemish his honor, that will tarnish his respect. So Hassan is standing on the bottom of the hill, waiting for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to walk down. And as he walks down, he looks up and he says, لَمَّا رَأَيْتُ أَنْوَارَهُ سَطَعَتْ لَمَّا رَأَيْتُ أَنْوَارَهُ سَطَعَتْ وضعت من خيفتي كفي على بصري خوفا على بصري من حسن صورته فلست أنظره إلا على قدري روح من النور في جسم من القمر كحلية نسجت من الأنجم الزهري. That the moment I saw the rays of the Prophet's beauty fall upon my eyes, I took my palm and I covered my eyes, not because he was not a beautiful sight to look at. Rather, he was the most beautiful sight. But I was afraid if I was to look at this man for any longer, Allah would snatch my eyesight away. Ki Muhammad se wafatune, tu hum tere hain. Ye jahan cheez hai kya? Loh wa qalam tere hain. Great poet Lama Iqbal, he says, when we recognize that our honor is contingent within the presence of the Prophet Sunnah being alive in our lives, then truly we have become honorable people. Then the world will work for us, we will not work for the world. We swear by the night when it, um, when it covers the night, the darkness of the night. Your Lord has never left you. Your Lord will never leave you. Rather, your Lord will always be with you. 
ألا ذكرت إلا إلا ألا ذكرت إلا ذكرت معي. That whenever I am remembered, you will also be remembered. In Mecca, when people started throwing different abuses towards him and statements of slander, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ." That we know that they have brought tightness into your heart. يَذِيقُ صَدْرَكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ that you feel tight, you feel like everyone has left you. Don't you don't have to be like Musa, who had to make dua, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, Wayasirli Amri. No, no, I will honor you. Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak. Awadana Anka Wizrak. The honor of our Prophet did not come from you and I. The honor of our Prophet came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fabima Rahmatim min Allahi linta lahum. That it is through the love and the mercy of Allah that our Prophet was honored. In the time of Mecca, when the Prophet lost Qasim radiallahu an, and Abu Lahab and the people of Mecca and the neighbors started to say, Inna Muhammadan qad ibtara. That Muhammad sallam has no lineage, will have no legacy. And they started to taunt him. Once again, Allah intervened. And he says, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't you worry, have we not given you so much? Have we not given you the greatest nation? Have we not given you the greatest ummah? That even prophets would pray that they were a part of this ummah. Ya Rabbi inni ajidu fil alwahi ummah, humu al-akharun as-sabiquna yawm al-qiyamah, faj'alhum ummati, Musa alayhi salam, Ibn Qutbi rahimullah narrates, under the ayah of Ulamma Sakata and Musa al Ghadabu Akhda al Wah, that he sees the virtues of our Ummah and he says, Oh Allah, I see a nation that will, that will come and they will be the last nation to come, but the first to enter Jannah. Make them my Ummah. And Allah will respond by saying, Hum Ummah to Ahmad. This is the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabbi, inni ajidu fil alwahi Ummah. إذا همنا بحسنة فلم يعملها كتبت لو حسنة واحدة وإذا هم بسيئة فلم يعملها كتبت لو حسنة حسنة كاملة. Oh Allah, what a nation that when they intend to do something good, even if they don't do it, they get the reward of it. فجعلهم أمتي make them my ummah. قالهم أمة أحمد. This is the nation of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then Musa says, Oh Allah, if you will not make me the prophet of this nation, فَجَعَلْنِي مِنْ أُمَّةِ أَحْمَدِ Make me a part of this ummah. إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ فَصَلِّ رَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ Don't put your head down. Don't turn away from what you have to do. فَصَلِّ رَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ Keep moving. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Keep struggling. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبَلَنَا Those who make an effort, those who move towards pleasing Allah, they will find that Allah's doors and pathways will always be open for them. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When they seek me, they will find me. When they look for me, they will find me. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُ مَشْكُورًا Every system in this world, my dear friends, every system in this world is a result-driven system. That if you work hard, but do not produce results, you will not succeed. It's all about results. If a student who is going to university says to his professor that I worked very hard, but I was unable to complete my assignment, the professor will say, well, good for you. I worked very hard, but I still have to fail you. When a person goes to work and they say that I was unable to complete my tasks, but I worked very hard, that doesn't mean anything in this world. The only system that is not simply result driven, that is not simply result driven, but rather it's effort driven, is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That even if we are unable, due to the weakness of our abilities, due to the difficulties that surround us, and we're engulfed by it, 
even if we are unable to produce similar results simply because of our effort فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Allah says that their effort will be appreciated. Their effort will be rewarded. Their effort will be seen to be a form of reward. Not just their results. Not just what they produced. So the honor of the Prophet was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, the honor that we possess belongs in following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this honor was not limited to this world in the, in the hereafter when the entirety of creation will be looking for a source of relief. the poet says in that day, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ Where everyone will be looking for themselves, for their own benefit, for their own profit, protecting themselves on that day. إِذَا مَنْ نَاسُ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ قَامُوا We'll be looking around that who will save us? هُنَاكَ يَقُومُ أَحْمَدِ Then and there, in the masses of people, the Prophet ﷺ will stand up and he will be the source of intercession. Where the narration of Tabrani goes, where in Muslim Ahmad ibn Hanbal, where all of humanity will go to Adam and they will say, Oh Adam, ask Allah to begin Hisab. And he will say, Ana lastu laha. This is not my place. Then they will go to Nuh, then they will go to Ibrahim, then Musa, then Isa. Finally, the entirety of humanity will come to the greatest of creation, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they will say, Oh Muhammad, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin hisab. And he will say, Ana laha. This responsibility, this sharaf was made for me. Ana sayyidu wulida adama yawm al qiyamati wa la fakhr. This was made for me. And then he will go, to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَيَسْجُدُ And he will fall into sajda. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya Muhammad, irfa' ra'sak. O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raise your head. Irfa' ra'sak. The time of prayer was for dunya. The time of sajda was for dunya. The time of prostration was for the world. Now, sal tu'ta. Now it's the time for you to make demands. Now it's the time for you to ask. Now it's the time for you to put your request forward. Similarly for us, our responsibility is to fulfill our commandments to Allah. So when the time comes that when we raise our hands, there is no barrier between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nakahin jahami amamili. Ju amamili to kahamili. The poet says, I looked everywhere in this world, but I was unable to find relief. I was unable to find peace. We come from America, a country where they say that everyone is happy. Country of opportunity, the country of happiness. I promise you that we have not seen people more sad than the people that live in those countries. Not because they don't have that which is physical. Not because they do not have that which is external. Not because they do not have that which is material. But because they do not have that which is internal. Not because they don't have anything that they're losing physically. But they're losing what, that which each and every one of us are blessed with. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Say to them, O oh Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the only time in the Quran where Allah actually tells us to be happy. Because my dear brothers and sisters, the goal of this life is not to live a happy life. If the goal of this life was to live a happy life, then there would be no person happier than the Prophet. 
But he, if you uncover the veils of his life, we don't see a happy person staring back at us. How could you be happy if you buried six of your seven children? How could you be happy if you buried your own mother? How could you be happy if you lost your own uncle? How could you be happy if the world was against you? He was a person of contentment. He was content with the decisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't see a happy person. The goal of this life is not to be happy. If it happens, then we are content. We are happy with whatever happens with us because it is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the only time where Allah tells us to be happy is to be فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Because Allah has given us deen. Allah has given us the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to honor. They live, li they live lives of emptiness and absence and void because they're missing the essential ingredient which makes life worth living. And that is the belief in the Akhirah. We don't live for dunya. We live despite of dunya. We live for Akhirah. The Prophet was walking through the trenches of Khandaq and he looks towards a group of Sahabas and they're laying down out of hunger. He looks towards another group and they're leaning over and he looks towards another group and they have rocks tied to their bellies and he starts to tear. He says, Allahumma la aisha illa aisha al-akhirah. Allahumma la aisha illa aisha al-akhirah. Faghfir al-muhajira wal-ansar. Oh Allah, there is no life except for the life of the hereafter. If this was the life that we had to live and we had to enjoy, then why did our Prophet not enjoy the bliss of this world? Though we are allowed to enjoy it. But that is not the only goal of this life. That is not the only objective of this life. فَلْيَفْرَحُوا To the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear friends, brothers and sisters, the honor of our Prophet was acclaimed and attested to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, the Sahabas, they recognized that their honor came in following his sunnah. Their honor came in honoring his legacy. Their honor came in abiding by his footsteps. If we think about it, if you were to turn back the clock of life and look throughout the history of time, it would be difficult to find a group of people that lived in such an unjust society, plagued with societal diseases, drowning in injustices, that it was the norm of their time to disrespect their elders. It was the norm of their time to take from the wealth of orphans. It was the norm of their time to bury their daughters. It was the norm of their time to get into wars and disputes for years over the most mundane, mundane differences. Aus and Khazraj for 50 years are fighting over small differences. Over throughout the history of time, it would be difficult to find a community that was drowning in injustices like the community before the coming of the Prophet ﷺ. Such were these people that when the superpowers of the world, the Romans and the Persians, when they would speak about which land to take over, they would ignore the Hijaz. They would say, these are people not worth ruling. These are people not worth looking after. They're not worth the headache. My dear friends, what happened? That over the span of a few years, those same individuals that were seen not worth ruling became the rulers of the world. What changed? What transformed them? Was it their excess of wealth? Rather not. Though wealth is a factor of honor, was it the increase in education? Ibn Hajar rahimahullah says, at the time of Hijrah, there were less than 35 Sahabas that knew how to read and write. It wasn't education, it wasn't wealth. What transformed them was the presence of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. It changed their outlook of life. It gave them a point of reference that from today onwards, success 
is not that which people call success. Success is not that which the world sees to be success. Success is what Allah says to be success. And Allah says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاز Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ Success in this world, we can argue about it for years. We have people in this world that make billions just defining the meaning of success. Like what is success? And everyone's definition can be different. But the moment we leave this world, no one can argue the definition of success. Because the definition of success in the hereafter is Jannah. No one will argue that no, 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 success still means this. In this world we can argue it. What transformed them to become the leaders of the world was identifying this point of reference. That the point of reference now is Allah is the legacy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Umar radiallahu anhu entered into Baytul Maqdis, when he was invited by Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah radiallahu anhu, and they said to him that we will give you the keys of Baytul Maqdis without a fight if your leader comes. So Umar radiallahu anhu enters the camp of the Muslims and then he prepares to go meet Sophronius and the generals of the Christians. And as he's preparing to leave, Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah anhu comes to him and he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, ayambaghi laka an tubaddila thiyabak. Would it be okay for you to just change your clothes? Because you have patches and they look shabby. It doesn't suit you. Not in any malicious way, but rather in an honorable way. It will look better if you don't dress like this. How many times have you been told this in America? That it would be better if you don't grow this and don't wear this. Why don't you just assimilate so you look like everyone else and you speak like everyone else? So we respond to them by saying that we are not like everyone else. Bada al Islam gariba, gariba, fatuba lil ghuraba, fatuba lil ghuraba. The Prophet of Allah informed us that this beautiful religion, it came into this world as something unique. And it will remain something unique. However, glad tidings to those who are strange, but they are not strange in the eyes of Allah. They may be strange in the eyes of people that they're performing wudu and praying in the corner of the airport that they believe in the mi'raj, they believe in the buraq, they believe in the hereafter. How are you? How do you believe in something that you've never seen? We believe in it because we have been taught that we believe in la rayba fi, in that which there is no doubt. That is ilm of ghayb that Allah has told us about. So he tells him, it doesn't suit you. Your name doesn't suit you. Change your name. You would have better opportunities at work if you change your name. Your lihya doesn't suit you. Your hijab doesn't suit you. So Umar anhu responded to him by saying, a response that was for us, to give us a sense of strength, a strength of confidence. You know, if you are standing in a room and you have your badge where you work, badge of, we from America, Amazon, badge of being an ambassador, a badge of working for a hospital, you wear your badge. And when you stand with your badge on, you feel honorable. Because people recognize that you work for so and so company. My dear friends, the most honorable badge to wear in our life is the badge of being a Muhammadi. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no badge that is more honorable than people recognizing us as Muslims. There is no badge that is more honorable than people recognizing us to be in the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he says, Ya Aba Ubaidah, kunna adallan nas. Do you not remember that we were the lowest of people? فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّنَا بِالْإِسْلَامِ Allah honored us through Islam. وَلَوْ يَبْتَغَيْنَ الْعِزَّةَ فِي غَيْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ لَأَذَلَّنَ اللَّهِ 
if we were to search, and this statement rings true till today, if we were to search for honor and respect in any other lifestyle outside of that which the Prophet brought, Allah Allah would once again bring disgrace, dishonor to us. Our honor lies in being a part of this ummah. When Rabi ibn Amr entered the palace of Rustum, he entered the palace of one of the greatest kings. And Rustum had beautified his palace with beautiful rugs and cushions. And Rabi ibn Amr was a poor sahaba, where he did not have a sheath for his sword. So poor, so limited in resources. And Sa'ad ibn Waqqas had sent him as the ambassador to speak to one of the greatest kings of this world at that time, Rustam. And he enters the palace of Rustam. And Rustam says to him, what do you want from us? And he responds by saying, we don't want anything from you. You need something from us. They had a hamiyyah, an honor, because of the honor of Islam. He says, Inna Allah ibaathana. Allah has sent us the nukhrija al-ibad, min ibadat al-ibad, ila ibadat al-rabb al-ibad, wa min dhiq al-dunya, ila wus'at al-akhira, wa min jawr al-adiyan, ila adl al-islam. Allah has sent us to tell you to leave the worship of people and enter into the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To stop thinking about and stressing about the life of this world and start thinking about the everlasting life of the hereafter. And stop drowning yourself in the different lifestyles that bring injustice and turn towards the lifestyle of Islam which brings nothing but justice. This was our honor. And when the Sahabas recognized this, they were ready to give up everything for our deen. Difficult decisions became very easy. When the Prophet ﷺ was preparing for hijrah, and we'll end with this, he came to the house of Abu Bakr anhu, and he knocked on the door. Aisha anha opened the door, and he asked for the father. They go to the room where the father is sitting, and the Prophet ﷺ says to him, Ya Abu Bakr, Inna Allah qad adanani lil hijra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted me permission to perform hijrah. Abu Bakr anhu, the moment he hears this, he looks up to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, As-suhbatu ya Rasulullah. As-suhbatu ya Rasulullah. Can I be with you? Can I please be with you? Because from, for them, a moment away from the Prophet was a moment of great trial, was a moment of difficulty. One day the Prophet was sitting in front of his companions and he said to them, as he was speaking to them about the gardens of Jannah and the bounties of Jannah, one young Sahaba started to cry. And the Prophet looks at him and he says, Ma yubkik, what is making you cry? I am speaking about Jannah. I'm not speaking about Jahannam or Qabr. I'm speaking about Jannah. You shouldn't be crying about Jannah. And the young Sahaba responds and he says, Ya Rasulullah, when you speak about Jannah, you speak about different levels. There are levels to Jannah. And I recognize that you will be at the highest level of Jannah. And I won't be where you are. O Prophet of Allah, what is Jannah without your presence and your companionship? And that makes me sad that I won't be around you in Jannah. And the Prophet looks down and he looks back up and he says to him that don't worry, Al-Mar'u ma'aman ahab. That a person will be with those whom they, whom they love. Whoever we love in this world is who we will be raised with on the Day of Judgment. يَوْمَئِذٍ يَسْلُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ يَوْمَ نَدْعُ كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ On that day, we will be raised with those whom we love. تَعْصِ الْإِلَاهَ وَأَنْدَ تُظْهِرُ حُبَّهُ وَهَذَا لُعُمْرِ فِي الْفِعَالِ بَدِيعُ لَوْ كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَأَطَعْتَ إِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ مُطِيئُ وَأَخُ دَعْوَنَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ الحمد لله, الحمد لله الذي لا يرجى لكشف الشدائد إلا هو ولا يدعى لرفع المكائد إلا هو لا واجد ولا ماجد إلا هو لا حافظ ولا ناصر إلا هو 
يونس في بطن الحوت حين ناداه وقال لا إله إلا هو يوسف في قائل البئر حين ناداه وقال لا إله إلا هو إبراهيم في نهر الحريق حين ناداه وقال لا إله إلا هو وأشهد أن لا إله إلا هو وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه العزيز فدعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا من ذكرنا وانثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون وقال جل وعلا في مقام آخر قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم وقال تعالى في مقام آخر أو من كان ميتا فأحييناه وجعلنا له نور يمشي به في الناس كما مثله في الظلمات ليس بخارج منها كذلك زين الكافرين ما كانوا يعملون وقال جل وعلا في مقام آخر قل هل نبئكم بالأخصرين أعمالا الذين ظل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحجن صنعا وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أبا سفيان جئتكم بكرامة الدنيا وخير الآخرة أسلم تسلم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا إن الدنيا عرض حاضر يأكل منه البر والفاجر ألا وإن الآخرة أجل صادق يقضي فيها ملك عادل ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة خير يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شر يرى أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم إن الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي لا يرجى لكشف الشدائد إلا هو ولا يدعى لرفع المكائد إلا هو وإن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمن الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاتم سيد نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم منصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم ومعهم وجعلنا منهم ومعهم اللهم اخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم ولا معهم اللهم اشي مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا وارحم موتانا وارحم موتانا وارحم موتانا إنك حق على كل شيء قدير اللهم انصر المسلمين المظلومين المصدعفين من كان حيث كان آمين 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 يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمن بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر البغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة